Hey guys, welcome back for another episode of Off-Road Hub. My name is Ken, thanks for joining me today. Last time I left you, I was working on my rear three link setup. I have my lower links complete. I just need to do my upper link and my pan hard bar. I'm definitely, definitely going to try to get those done in this video. I don't see why I couldn't get those. And then once I get those done, maybe I'll move on to something completely different. We'll see where it goes. Anyways, there's a lot of grinding involved in doing a solid axle swap. I mean, a lot. So before I started uh, making this video today, I, I was working on this and some things underneath. And I think that if I commit to grinding for an hour a day <laughs> on top of what I'm trying to build, I'll get caught up and have all the grinding done that I need to get done for the entire project. There is, I put a lot of miles on that Harbor Freight uh, four and a half inch angle grinder and it's held up pretty well. So anyways, let's get to that upper link and the pan hard bar. So from last time, my lower link mounts on the frame and on the axle right there, they're all tacked in. And then my upper link mount's gonna go right up here. And, and then I've got my other link mount's gonna go on top of the axle up here. And of course, there's gonna be a pan hard mount bracket on the axle back here somewhere. Pan hard bar will come across. And uh, the frame mount will be somewhere in here. I'm gonna have to mount uh, my, uh, my strut tower right here as well. So I'm going to tack that in nice and light because I might have to move it a half an inch or so back and forth to figure out exactly how to make those two fit together. It's going to be tight back there. And here are my two lower links from last time. My upper link is going to be very similar to these, um, almost the exact same length. Hopefully, if anything, just a little bit longer uh, because I guess a longer upper arm keeps the pinion pointing up as the axle droops. So. That's kind of what I'm going for, the exact same length or maybe just a tiny bit longer. Just placing my third link here. My uh, mount is uh, 22 degrees offset, and that points back at the axle here. And so I'm going to mount it not quite centered on the axle. It'll be uh, just a little bit over to the passenger side. But um, I just wanted to set this up here so that I could find the location for my bracket, and then I have to cut off the excess tubing. Uh, so that I can complete this link. But yeah, that's where the top bracket will go. So the high-tech tool that I use to measure for links is this 40-year-old tape measure from Kmart that belonged to my grandfather. And the upper link length is going to be 41 and a half inches. So these link ends and everything here add three and three quarters inches on each side for a total of seven and a half inches. So my tubing, um, I need to take 41 and a half, which I want my total length to be, and then subtract seven and a half, which gets me to 34. So I need to cut this tubing to 34 inches and that way, I'll have my 41 and a half inch link. Just like in my last video, I put a nice bevel on the edge here on the end. Give me a nice, uh, a nice shoulder to weld into. Just tax for now. So there it is in all of its glory. The third link 
that goes on top. So I'll get all those three links on and then I can finally get started on the pan hard bar. All right, one, two, three links linked. I'm pretty excited. That is awesome to see. Um, I think it looks great. So on to the pan hard. So these are my pan hard mounting brackets. This goes on the outside of the frame in the rear. This is my axle bracket, which I had to weld together. It's, uh, meant it was designed to be square like that, but I ground it off to give it some offset. That'll get um, it in a slightly better position that way. And then um, this is my actual pan hard bar. This is one and a half inch diameter by quarter inch wall DOM tubing. And of course, I'll be using Johnny joints on both ends of that. So I temporarily installed the other end of the pan hard bar in the axle bracket. I just welded on down there just so I could figure out uh, the best place to put this bracket on this side right here. So it's going to go right about there. Um, I'm going to have to take this back off because I'm going to put some uh, plating on this. To reinforce the frame and also this is right where the shock tower goes and it actually this gets Frenched into the frame right in this area so <clears throat> installing this bracket on here right now is just temporary to get uh, the length I need for for the link for the pan hard link I'll be able to make that and that'll be done. And then if I have to move this back and forth, you know, this distance, it's not gonna make any difference uh, for the pan hard bar that I make because there's plenty of adjustment to compensate for, you know, half inch, three quarters of an inch of movement either way. So that's what I'll do right now. Just temporarily weld that there so I can get my link made. So now I just need to measure the distance from here to here and that will give me my link length. With these smaller Johnny joints, uh, each one of these takes up uh, three and an eighth inches on each end uh, for a total of six and a quarter inches of space lost to joints. So uh, my length for the bar total was 41 and a half. So 41 and a half minus six and a quarter is 35 and a quarter. So I need to cut this tube down to 35 and a quarter and then install uh, my other link on that end. I honestly probably don't even have to weld that because there's no way it's coming out of there. But eh, I'll weld it anyways.
Well, apparently, when I forced this bung into here, it compressed the end of the bung inside the tube, and now this Johnny joint is totally stuck in the bung. I mean, like, really, really stuck, and it's not going to come out ever. So, um, I'm going to try to save my tubing. I think the Johnny joint's destroyed, as is the bung. Fortunately, I have another one, uh, but I'll have to order another one for the, for the front. I'm going to cut this out of here and then try to drill out the tubing, I guess. So you can kind of see in there where the non-threaded end of the bung kind of got crushed just enough. You can see the bolt was hitting it. Uh, so if you've got to try to press or pound a bung into a, into a piece of tubing, I don't recommend it. I really dislike using a one inch drill bit in a hand drill because you can get a ton of kickback if the bit catches, uh, but the tubing wouldn't fit in the drill press, so this is the only option. Okay, it should go in now with just some maybe light encouragement. I can almost push it in by hand, so let's give it some tapping. Ugh. Oh, geez, come on. It's supposed to go into a one inch inside diameter tube. I don't understand why this thing won't go into a one inch diameter tube. It's kind of, kind of dumb. There, I finally got it. I'm going to see if I can save this Johnny joint by uh, cutting through this nut because, like I said, it will not come off. But the threads on this side of the nut look okay, so I don't know. Maybe I can make a, a cut here and it'll release. Well, I tried. I cut this nut off. You can see the threads are pretty trashed. And I tried to get this uh, lock nut off. The threads are trashed. So I need a new Johnny joint, a bung, a lock nut. And uh, yeah, that should do it. But moving right along, I am back in business with uh, my pan hard bar because I had an extra Johnny joint. Not an extra, it was actually for the front. But uh, I'll just have to order a new one for the front. But uh, let's get this pan hard bar on, yeah? And there we go, just like magic. Pan hard bar is installed. The angle looks pretty good. Here's another shot where you can see all the links, the three links and the pan hard. I like it. The next step for the rear end is gonna be installing these big giant rad flow coilovers, 14 inch coilovers. Uh, it's gonna involve um, Frenching the frame, which means cutting into it so that the coilovers are inset. And like I said before, uh, this is going to have to move because after the, uh, the big coil over uh, mount is in here, I'm going to plate this for extra, extra strength. And uh, I'll also be doing some reinforcing and plating on, underneath where the lower links are and things coming down off the frame just to give them some additional strength. Hey guys, thanks for joining me on this one. I hope you enjoyed watching the process. If you haven't already, make sure you check out my Instagram and I just started a Facebook group uh, called Off-Road Hub. Uh, we can share pictures and ideas over there. It's a lot of fun. Just keep it friendly. And uh, here on YouTube, make sure you give me a like for this one and subscribe if you haven't already so I can share new content with you every Monday and Thursday. And we'll see you next time.